Hello to the people who are here. I know. Hey, you know, I'm I'm feeling that because uh, of the time uh, daylight time saving changes in Europe, but not yet in America. Oh, they might be complicated. Yeah, I've had a few meetings that have been confusing. <laughs> ah, good point. Good point. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I wonder. Well. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like wait and see here for a few minutes and see what happens. But yeah, I get yeah. your point. Yeah. All right, let's wait and see. Yeah. Welcome all. Hi, Tell, Randy, Oliver. Hi, Taylor. I was just saying, uh, I have a feeling that because of the time zone, uh, the daylight time saving having started in Europe already, there might be some mess with this uh, meeting. Yeah, we probably have a couple of weeks of this with the We'll change our time zone in the U.S. in a few weeks and then have the same problems. Well, the U.S. is changing on November 7th, so I think we'll be back to be fully synced next Monday. Greetings, Rich. Hello. All right. Does anyone have any? topics for today. I'm still waiting for my main system to reconnect. Um, let's see. Working group. Nope. All right. 
right, there we go. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Daylight 7 today and EU next Sunday for the U.S. Any other time zones we got to think about, Tal? I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this is just a few of my morning meetings got a, a little screwed up because of this. So. All right. Um, let's see. The KubeCon sessions are on YouTube now. Um, we put some, last week we added some highlights with uh, some names of some sessions that look good. And check this out. Uh, what else do we got here? Do we have any pull request? We do. Does anyone have anything else? To add today? All right. Uh, these all look pretty minimal. Oh, why didn't this get merged? These were just updates, I think, to add the numbers. I'm going to merge that. Squash. Depend a bot. Victor on the call? No. Um, let's see. Um, get back and. Looks fine. All right. That's it. Uh, we had some discussions last week around this one, but I don't see any use case that's being expanded to add. Is that something, Randy, that you'd like to think could be a, a good area to expand and maybe do a write-up, either a user story or use cases? Yeah, we definitely had a discussion last week. I'm having a hard mm -hmm. time recalling what were the next steps we decided on. Um, so, um, whether it's going to be some type of focused one on that, or is it going to be a larger level? I think if it's going to be more than a, a very focused on that, then we'd want to differentiate between like this one. 
Yeah, I think the discussion was more focused on BGP and maybe Jeffrey was saying he might kind of uh, expand on this use case based on his experience. All right. <clears throat> the other way that some of this can be written um, to have it more focused, which seems like maybe a fit for at least the NAT portion, would be to write up some user stories. So these are a lot shorter. Describing a, a problem that we want to try to cover. This is under the supply chain attacks. Yes, I think in this case, the, the use case is more the BGP. The NAT is one of the problems to deal with. Mm -hmm. But if we are talking about the user story, maybe something uh, BGP based. And again, if I'm not mistaken, Jeffrey was volunteering to kind of provide more details based on how they deploy BGP. All right. Cases and stable enough. <clears throat> Oliver, have y'all talked more any more about this use case that y'all had contributed? Wondering if there's some best practices that we could pull out of here after y'all have now spent, I don't know, it seems like it's been a year when we got started it might have been less for the let's see four months ago so you know it's probably six months ago when we we're digging into writing this up and then but it's been a good year worth of talking through all this sort of thing yeah I no, no i mean not specifically but i think i mean you know let me say i'm very keen on making that happen so i guess it's just a question of how you know I think for me, at least, I don't know for others, it's a little bit unclear, you know, just the process maybe of how we go from use cases to best practices. I mean, if it's go through it now and identify what you think are best practices, and then we present that to the group, that's fine. Or if you see that as something where, you know, several people might want to, you know, do we do it as a discussion on the, on the, on GitHub? I don't know. It may be just a little guidance there, but I would be happy to try to carry this forward because it is important. So I, I think um, regarding like best practices or what you know, lessons learned around it that we could highlight and um, probably be talking to some of the current folks that are working on this stuff. And I'd, I mean, if that's something that you, they would be interested in, you wanna do then I could put some time to talk with y'all about it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that would be. All right. Um, so I guess going like back to the user stories and then what we were trying to do on the during KubeCon um, was asking more for what are challenges that people are facing? What are things that folks are having? any specific problems or issues. If it's not talking about something here, are there any, is there anything else day to day? Or recently, like something relevant that y'all have real world run into? Well, I've uh, been starting to work on the, a new uh, discussion around uh, uh, proposed best practice regarding what I call fully declarative. Uh, I have half of something written. I'm uh, trying to use HackMD to see how well that works for me. Uh, it's public, but uh, please don't read it yet. It's not, it's not done. 
I hope I'll be done by next week and we'll be able to present something. Is that a, a set of best practices? At this point, it's a discussion, uh, kind of on the style I did before regarding operators. So first of all, trying to examine the issue before I we actually are able to extract best practices from it. All right. So maybe have a draft um, ready to review next week? Yeah, I think so. It depends on uh, how this one project I'm working on is going. Uh, if I have time, if I have a day that I can work on it, I think I can probably finish it. All right. Well, does anyone have anything else they'd like to look at? If we don't. And give everyone's time back. Hey, Daniel. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. You got yeah, anything sorry. you want to take a look at? Uh, I'll I'll start uh, as I start to be able to some more free time for me i'll uh, i'll be able to jump back in on the conversations today kind of, right. kind of a refresher um that's basically it okay um well saying ideally would dig more into the active challenges so if there's something that you've been working through yeah, uh, the, I think the most active challenges we have, we're dealing on a day to day um, mm -hmm. have been um, roles, for example, um, uh, cluster admin roles and uh, requirements for uh, CRDs. These are the things we feel the most with the current uh, when we deal with the VNFs or uh, CNFs mm -hmm. from vendors. Secondly, is network segmentation. Segmentation, network segmentation is still one of the biggest challenge we've seen, I think. So, for example, you want to have you you want to offer access to a cluster to be able to deploy some specific CNFs. You don't want to give admin, but then you're forced to because of the CRD custom definitions that are required. So then, uh, those are things that are still in the in the day-to-day -day problems that we face. I think most operators face right now. So, uh, um, I mean, and that is basically network segmentation. All right. This is the ones I have top of, top of head right now, I would say. Denver, Drew, didn't we start working on a cluster admin role test for the Athena test suite? Or it's on, uh, maybe it's in the queue. I think that one already got added as part of the Cubescape stuff we've been implementing. Right. So that's a, a check to where to see if if cluster admin role is being assigned. Daniel, uh, the the trick is uh, we write so we know we can do it. The question mm -hmm. is, could we should we do it, and can we live without it? So right. are we able to? For us, if you're not a if you're not a cluster admin, you actually you just want to deploy a, a workload, even like for example five G core in our case or something like mm -hmm. this. Why should we assign admin role, cluster admin roles to a specific set of users to be able to deploy those things as a workload. Right. They're one that often people are just whatever is the easiest, right? So the idea with this test would be to say, hey, we think this is a bad practice to require it. So now you need to say why you need it. 
and then you get the exception. Oh, this is why and I communicate it to you. And then other ones hopefully go, oh, we don't really need it. Let's use a different rule. Would be the encouragement there. Yep. Uh, and that was um, related to network segmentation, or is that was no, no, not okay. the network segmentation is the other problems we face the most. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the one where I'm right now focusing a bit more because uh, we can do some multi interface. Maltus is there, we can do multi interface, but then and there's a whole thing about network segmentation that is you know, just popping a new interface on a, on a pod that makes things work. So uh, the next step, how do you do network segmentation, but do the next step around, okay, so I got, I got a new interface, fine, I need to now mess with the routes of the pods, and then I need to find a way to make it connected to a, a, a real network, which is not just a, a VLAN interface. So uh, those are the next steps that I think are missing. And we challenge, we we face challenges every every week with this. So, so the and in that case, the fix is either DNF design or it's around augmenting things within either QRDs or CNIs or something else to fix that issue. And there's various ways to do it. Oh, I was I muted. Did anyone hear me? I think you, you were, were because uh, uh, I was actually. I didn't realize thinking. I was muted. <laughs> All right. So I was asking you, Daniel, if you'd be up for writing these up, and I was like showing yeah. you. I think you may have come in. <laughs> Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> this could be written, these both could be written up either as full use cases, which are more extensive, like this one, <laughs> start over, or they could be smaller um, problem statements like these user stories, which are a little bit shorter. And then from here, we problem. could. Okay. So and I I'd can, be happy I to work think. with you <laughs> on that. That's cool. what I would suggest saying. I, 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 <laughs> perfect. So uh, let's think. Right. Uh, 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 I think the uh, CRD thing can be a 
problem mm -hmm. statement while the yeah. network segmentation is into a full use case. Great, that sounds great. And then we can expand from there and maybe share it with some different folks that you, you know, like you had some suggestions on who could help and we could reach out to different people for this. Um, Perfect. In the community. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything else? Hi, Victor. Hello, Taylor. Um, no, I don't have anything. All Thank right. You. Okay, well, we'll end it here. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, Taylor. <laughs>